and I was right. <laughs> Bibiano is very comfortable no matter where this fight goes. Oh, good oh. takedown by Fasuoli there. This fight brought to you by Russian Standard Vodka. And already, Bibiano is working the jiu-jitsu magic here. It's a very intense opening first few seconds. Not back. Touch you here. Very tightly locked in together there. Bibiano Fernandez using his right hand and elbow to target that blue head of Falciroli. Gustavo's going to want to get that right arm underneath. You'll see him there trying to work it just like that inside on Bibiano so that he can start to work a sweep or get to his knees. There we go. Back up. That was a nice, safe, good display of Gypsy there. Good right hand from Falciroli. Missed with the left, but landed with the right for sure. Slightly taller, isn't he? He is taller. He definitely has a few inches of reach. Viviando just has a very big frame for 135 pounds, too. Has a never-ending gas tank. Very explosive with his takedowns. Lightning fast strikes. He likes using that right leg as well to uh, kick the left leg of his opponent. And Gustavo is you know, a fantastic jiu-jitsu practitioner there. He has really good instincts, as we saw on the ground. And you know, if he can exploit this reach and kind of get some timing down. Working the open guard here a little bit. Now he's in on some deep half, a la Jeff Glover. Hey. You know, it's not something you see a lot in MMA, the deep half guard, because it does make you susceptible to just yes. taking a bunch of punishment. But Gustavo's going to try to work out the back door or work a sweep here. He's got a thick body, Fernandez. A good low center of gravity. Very good jiu-jitsu match right now. Both guys, you can tell, very high level. Even those little things like blocking the elbows and keeping his left hand inside Bibiano's hands. Intelligent work with the elbow there on the thigh, debilitating as this fight goes on. The muscular part of the upper thigh. You don't see a lot of guys using the deep half in, in mixed martial arts. I'd like to see how, uh, how he's able to pull anything off here. It'd be kind of uh, be impressive. There's some really good sweeps. Guys like Jeff Glover are just absolute wizards at this. All the guys over at Paragon Jiu-Jitsu, but not a whole lot you can do when you're getting punched in the noggin when you're trying to work for sweeps. But sometimes it's a trade-off. You know that you're going to get a sweep, but in the process you're going to take one or two shots. So you, you trade it off and say, okay, I'm going to get these shots, but I'm going to end up putting you on your butt. Keeps working for Anders, even in this tight interlocking little relationship they've got there with that elbow towards Falciroli's ear. I think I'm seeing a little bit of blood on Falciroli's nose. Falciroli talking to the referee. Fabiano's going to try to free his left leg. You see when he's got the underhook there on the knee, that prevents if Gustavo goes to scramble and get to his knees. It's going to help him keep Gustavo on his back there. It's also helping him work that, that leg out a little bit. He's going to use his right shin on Gustavo's right thigh to create a little space, or we'll use his foot just like he's doing there. He's going to pop that leg out and come right into cross side position here. There's not a lot Gustavo can do from here, because as soon as he opens his legs to really do anything, it's going to allow Bibiano the space he needs to switch his hips back and bring that left knee up underneath the armpit of Gustavo's right side. We're about to see that here. Gustavo's going to try to work up to his knees, and that's going to give Bibiano that space he needs to escape. And the other option is Bibiano can just step over Gustavo's body with that leg and just start working on a half guard the other way. Good One of the things that's impressive about Fernandez in this position is he's not just struggling to hold his advantage there. But he's he's working up to the back here. Constantly working with the elbow. Yeah, he's doing a very good job of staying busy. Open attack! Open attack! Open attack! Open attack! attack. attack. Decides to get to his feet. Attack. A very active round from Gustavo on the bottom. Even though he's been in half guard, he hasn't taken a ton of damage. Ten seconds left. Go! The referee brings them both to their feet. Not much time for them to do anything about it, though. 
complex okay, technical first round that saw Bibiano very busy okay. and Gustavo really working hard as well to, to stay in the match, but good elbow work. Go! Again, this audience at the Smart Araneta Coliseum not the noisiest uh, fight we've uh, we've seen them <laughs> respond to. This fight brought to you by Russian Standard Vodka. Vodka as it should be. There's a lot of anticipation, I think, in this bout. I mean, everything that's happened with uh, Bibiano in the UFC and brought a lot of expectations to him. And you have to think that almost puts a little bit of pressure on him, but he's, he's just so comfortable when he fights. And, uh, Gustavo, this is a, a, a great opportunity for him because you know he's fought as hot, as heavy as 155 pounds in Australia because he's had a hard time finding opponents. And just lost his balance there; it was a slip, and now he's getting punished for it. Really yeah. likes that deep half too. Unable to defend the punches coming in because he's got so many things, so many other things to work on. He's trying to get Fernandez's legs, but he's taking. He's taking numerous blows to the head now and can't get any defense to block them. There's a good 15 or so punches he's taken to the head and face. I think that uh, Bibiano's found the answer to that deep half. He just keeps stepping over or he'll step back in the half guard. Drive that knee over to get his base in. Oh, now Bibiano's totally pass guard. Oh, he's going to look for the triangle. He's going to try to pull that arm up and then flop to his butt and get the triangle there. That's pretty deep. Uh, looked like Gustavo may have spelled that out. Brought his elbow to the ground. He's okay. Clearly to all of us, Gustavo Falciroli is bleeding from the nose. And it's not surprising he's just taken an absolute assault from Bibiano's fists. And Gustavo's never been stopped in his fights. He's lost his couple of bouts via unanimous decision. But you know, he's never really been pressured like Bibiano's keeping pressure on him the whole time. And that's when you see two guys that are very high level jujitsu. These moves go back and forth so quickly, and there's such good economy of motion. And we're seeing that now, even though Gustavo's been on the bottom for most of this, he's doing a really good job of having a, a sense of where he's at and moving his hips in, in flow with Bibiano. I think Falciroli may be cut on top of the nose as well, on the bridge of the nose yes. there. That may be just some blood coming out of the nostrils, but I'm not convinced. To finish, maybe. Punches to the back of the head as well. He's very, He's very busy in these uh, in these entangled body situations. Bibiano keeps half working, time, half time. keeps catching the judge's eye. He's actually got to be careful here because Gustavo, even though it's a it's low percentage when Bibiano had his hand between Gustavo's legs there, he could get caught in a reverse triangle. You know, sweat's a huge factor here, but I've seen it happen so. Got to be a little cognizant of that because it looked like Gustavo was definitely thinking about it. Yes. Elbow to the head as well as fists. Really, he's taken so much punishment, Gustavo. Yeah, and Viviano's just, just beating Gustavo up here, just softening him up, letting himself naturally open up those positions. And Gustavo needs to explode out of here. He can't try to fight strength and, and uh, stay on his back here. He needs to get his arms inside explode to create some space with Bibliano and, and get that knee inside, yes, recompose yes. guard, or better yet, get to his knees. Stand back up. Working back in on the deep half again. He's coming out the back. He, can take, he might be able to take Bibiano's back here if he's able to slide his right knee underneath Bibiano. But Bibiano from here could hit what's called a ninja and get to um, Gustavo's back. <laughs> You know, if, if he just sits up, I was say, yeah, if Gustavo just sits up, he'd actually be Bibiano's half guard. Working on those toes. Oh, and it took a knee to the head there. Pretty good thinking from Falciroli. Not much really he can do in these situations. Well, Fa Falciroli's really, you know, efficiently has Bibiano's back. back there. He just needs to be able to get his legs clear from underneath Bibiano. It's just very difficult to do because that movement is much larger than the uh, energy it takes Bibiano just to turn back in you and flatten you out. But I guess if there's a, there's a positive here, it's that this time he's not taking any punches. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, so, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, he's okay. I'll bet it back if he showed up. Well, Falciroli landing a few sort of hammer blows of his own there. He's been infrequent during this contest, but there's a dozen or so coming in. He's got that 
foot. Yeah, they're trapping that foot that stops stops the scramble. It doesn't let the style of the GTs move too much. Can't really tell from this angle if he's looking for a calf crank or not. It doesn't look like it. It looks like he's just using that leg to flatten him out. The end of the second round approaches, and Fussy Rhodes landed a good number of punches in the last minute of this contest. But I think probably been outweighed by the number of punches that Viviano landed prior to that, and in the first round as well. Kim Ha Yul signals that we are into the final round of this contest. So the final five minutes, Bibiano Fernandez, for my money, is ahead. Seems to have the advantage on the ground, and he's very busy. Russian standard vodka bringing you this fight. And nice Bibiano is fence. busy again. Here we go. Oh, this is good. Oh, he's not going to be all the way on the back here. Looks like he has a triangle. He might be able to lock it up. Slippery customer. Good work. Nice up kick. Bibiano just moving very, very efficiently. Good scramble by both guys. Bibiano looks like he might be a little bit tired here. Gustavo Falsarelli really needs to let his hands go a little bit here. Take advantage of that scramble that looked like Bibiano's slightly slowing the pace. That was a nice double leg takedown, and Bibiano did a very nice job of defending and, and working his way out of that. Falciroli can sometimes, I've seen a couple of times in this fight, lead with the elbow. Which is uh, something you don't often see, but it's effective. He's landed on both occasions that I've seen him do it. Pace has kind of come to a screeching halt yeah, it here. It's a, it's a different kind of fight than what we saw in the first two rounds. Good clipping right hand from Bibiano Fernandez. Whoa, there's the swinging, the swinging back punch that you see Edward Falayo employ occasionally. Bibiano Fernandez reminds me a little bit of like, um, like a Miguel Torres. He moves very efficiently on the ground. Um, you know, arguably has better wrestling than Miguel does, but fluid, fluid, fluid on the ground and, and mixes it up some really nice punches. Falciroli's nose continues to bleed. And good right hand from him there. I don't think Falciroli is really feeling a sense of urgency to get it done here. Coming up to about the last two and a half minutes of the fight, and he's got to know he spent most of the time on his back. Just swallowed a stinging right hand from Fernandez. Nice knee using that reach. Yeah. Yeah. Falciroli got a, a nice takedown attempt. I mean, I think that if he was able to pressure with it again, he might be able to work from top if he's able to put Bibiano on his butt. Nice right hand from Falciroli. Landed right on the chin. It wasn't loaded with power, but it was crisp and accurate. Both fighters feeling the fatigue, particularly, I imagine, B Bibiano Fernandez here. He does look a little more tired than I think I've seen him in uh, his past fights. Hasn't fought for 11 months. Oh, that was a good kick to the head. This round for Falciroli is all about seeing what he can do to readdress the balance because he didn't have the best of the action in the first two rounds. Fernandez now pins his man up against the side of the cage, uses the knee work, gets some knees in return. Bibiano's being very cautious and keeping his head in the center there. He's not looking too far left or right. You want to keep your head right on your opponent's chin or just right in, right on his chest. That's what he's doing, burying it on that chin and the chest there. Good right hand for him just as he pulled away. That head control is important. You know, wherever your head goes, your body goes. Siroli has kept a good, even pace right throughout this fight, even though we've seen the, the fight take uh, 
quite extreme turns. This, this third round, very different from the first two that we saw. It definitely looks like Bibiano Fernandez is slowing down in this, this bout. I mean, and like we talked about earlier, Gustavo Falsaroli is he's a CFC champ for a reason. He's very tough jiu-jitsu black belt. And, you know, he's fought guys that are bigger, stronger, so he's used to having to push guys around and, and get in there and, and use the technical aspects against a guy that may be muscling him a little bit more. Well, with 20 seconds left in this contest, neither man is able, I imagine, to make much of an impression. It's going to override what's gone before, and the, the work that Fernandez did in the first two rounds will probably stand him in good stead. Down goes Falciroli, but it was more of a stumble than a clean punch. And the fight is over. Viviano Fernandez helps his opponent to his feet. Good sportsmanship. Took a little while for him to get up there. Both men really quite spent. Fernandez receiving the congratulations of his corner man. There was that nice up kick that landed right on the chin of Viviano. Certainly that was the highlight of the round and the cleanest contact uh, probably of the entire fight. But was it enough? The smart Araneta Coliseum, home of the thriller in Manila some 37 years ago, has just witnessed the main event in 1FC. Bibiano Fernandez looks good for this one by decision. The official announcement will come in a few moments, though. Mark Richmond has the card with the magic words on it, and he is making his way to the cage. Fernandez making his debut in 1FC. Gustavo Falciroli has one win to his name at one fighting championship. Who's got this one? You've got to look towards Fernandez, surely. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we go to the judges' scorecard. And once again, it's a unanimous decision. The winner in the red corner, Bibiano, The Flash, Fernandez. <laughs>